Ah, shrubs. Doesn't the word shrub just invoke like an image of some sort of like grumpy gnome plant creature? Like, mm. Mm. Anyone else ever get that up here? It's really not fair. Shrubs are awesome. This shrub is Potentilla fruticosa. Okay, common names are yellow hardhack, yellow rose, witty. I literally have no idea why witty. Most people, like me, simply refer to it as syncophoil or Potentilla. Syncophoil or syncophoil is French for five leaflets or leaves. Uh, I think there's a loss in translation thing because there aren't five leaves per lobe, but there are five petals on every flower. Syncophoil is a hardy evergreen perennial shrub okay, that's in bloom from like late spring all the way until frost. So that's a huge bonus to planting this plant. What's even more amazing, listen close, this plant is hardy from zones two to seven, okay? Two. If you live in a lower growing zone and you're always like, what do I plant? Nothing survives. Plant this plant. Open plains, river valleys, wetlands, forest edges, alpine zones. Syncophoil will grow there. I cannot stress enough the versatility of this plant. I also feel it's a very overlooked, underappreciated shrub. Soil-wise, syncophoil can handle loamy soil, sandy soils poor soils, it'll do okay. The only thing I would say is make sure the soil's well draining. It does a lot better in well draining soil. So uh, if you've got clay heavy soil, that might be a problem. Otherwise, you're probably fine. Moisture wise, this plant is very drought tolerant. So if you live in a dry, hot area, again, plant this plant. Should I say plant this perennial? Plant this perennial. Matching the dry aspect, it loves the heat, it does really well in full sun, it'll do well in partial shade too, but it'll probably bloom a lot more if you plant it in a full sun location. I guess that also really depends on your climate though. Everything depends on your specific climate. Let's look at the foliage. The leaves are usually blue-green in color and their leaf shape is pinnate. The leaf arrangement is palmate. Syncophoils can grow anywhere from one to four feet tall, two to four feet wide, nice size bush. I want to talk about pruning. So a lot of people think spring and fall are just the best time to prune any plant. And that's true for a lot of plants, but for evergreen shrubs, you want to do it in the winter. And I'll tell you why. First of all, you can actually see the branches, okay? In the summer, the syncophoil is like huge foliage, lots of flowers, you don't really even want to disturb it. Uh, you really have to get in there. It's really hard to see what you're even cutting. In the winter, it's just branches. So you can see if there's anything broken, if there's anything that looks diseased, anything you want to get out of there, anything that's sort of out of its ornamental shape, if you're worried about that. So much easier to do in the winter time. Secondly, it's a really good time to increase um, space in the plant. In the winter, when it's just branches, increasing that airflow underneath especially is really good for the plant's health. It avoids any kind of like moisture issues, fungal disease near the base. There isn't going to be a lot of airflow when there's just a thick chunk of foliage all season long. Thirdly, and maybe most importantly, pruning in the winter time decreases your chances of getting a pest or disease on your syncophoil. I can't stress this enough because when you're pruning a plant, this goes for any plant, you're essentially wounding it. Like plants are resilient enough that they usually have mechanisms built in to deal with this, but you're still kind of exposing a part that isn't supposed to be exposed. You're making it vulnerable. So it's a lot easier after you prune a plant for it to become susceptible to lots of pests and disease. The winter time is the most minimal pest and disease season. It's a perfect time. If syncophoil would have one shortcoming, sorry, it would be its susceptibility to pests and disease. Weevils, aphids, thrips, spider mites. Those are just a few uh, pests that can really get into syncophoil. Take the one in my backyard, for example. I cut a few of these branches off 
for the video. However, I'm a little concerned because when we moved into this house, this shrub was just covered in webs. It was taken over by spider mites. So we sprayed it down with a soapy water, sort of safe insecticide solution. And we're still kind of spraying it down with harsh water every day because the leaves are so tiny and the spider mites get underneath the, and eat the bottom of the leaves, damaging the plant. It's been a bit of a battle, but it's doing okay. Still flowering. We'll see what next season brings. Enough about pests. Back to the plant profile. You haven't already noticed, the flowers look a lot like strawberry blossoms. And in fact, they're in the same family, the Rosaceae family. As mentioned before, the cinquefoil flower always has five petals. And you'll see yellow most commonly, but there's also white, and there's also orange these days, and pink. There's some cultivars that are a mix. The one in my yard is actually like an orange-yellow combo. When I saw the orange cinquefoil flower, I was like, oh, sunset -y. I prefer the orange. Love it. Really nice. And again, their long bloom season is such a perk of planting cinquefoil. Like May, early June, all the way till frost. So nice. As far as the fruit goes, cinquefoil doesn't produce a, a berry. It has a seed capsule-like thing called an achene. You can't simply call it uh, a seed capsule because it's different than a seed capsule for two big reasons at least. So one, uh, the seed inside this capsule is not actually attached to the capsule, it's separate in there. And also, when it's mature, this seed will not be ejected like a lot of plants do with their seed capsules. Uh, it, it's mature and it just drops to the ground inside the Hoskort capsule. If you think of a uh, sunflower seed, sunflower seeds are actually also achenes. You think of that tiny little gray seed inside that husk of those like, seeds you can buy to munch on. It's not truly attached in there, right? It's just, it's just hanging out in there. It's protected by the outer shell of the husk. Most seeds in the sunflower family and the rosaceae family, they are actually achenes. Now, you might think, like, what the, what's the point of that? Doesn't that reduce germination? Doesn't that threaten species survival? Like, if you think about it, actually, no, because the seed capsule is like a protective mechanism. So, with the keens, uh, birds and critters love eating them. And having this protective seed capsule that the seed stays in, and this is just one example, um, keeps it alive and able to be back in the soil to germinate. So the bird or the critter will eat it, the seed doesn't break down, the capsule protects it throughout the whole critter, the critter poops it out, and it lands in the soil where it wants to be in its proper germination conditions, and then it can germinate. The other interesting thing is uh, to get the zinc foil to fruit, it needs a male and a female plant. So the term for that is dioecious. So you'll likely see more flowering cinquefoils than fruiting ones, just because you need those two in the same vicinity to cross-pollinate in order to get those achenes forming. What can I say to sum things up? If you're looking for a low-maintenance, drought-tolerant, hardy evergreen perennial shrub, plant this perennial. Great way to add texture to your yard or lawn, front or back. And actually, it would make a really great hedge if you kept it pruned. Uh, it would be a really awesome sort of hedge for a front yard, right? Keep those crazy neighbor kids out. Just keep, keep those stray cats out. I don't know why I said that. I love neighborhood cats. I don't love their poop, though. You with me? Thanks for watching Plant Speak. Subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more videos like this.